Christians will not get away with sin. God will judge his people for willful sin. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 26 through 31, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10, 26-31 We cannot lose our salvation, but we will be judged. Notice it says that there are no more sacrifices for sins. This shows that we cannot lose our salvation, but it goes on to say that Christians will be judged for willful sins and that we would be thought to be worthy of worse punishment than physical death. For a Christian to willfully sin is to trample over the blood of Christ. It is the same thing as spitting in his face. When you decide to commit a sin, not caring what God thinks about it, because Jesus paid for all your sins and you can't go to hell, it is as if you are looking into the face of Jesus Christ on the cross, seeing the agony in his eyes as he is dying to save you, and you sneeringly saying to him, I don't care what you want me to do, I am going to commit this sin and do what I want to do, because you can't send me to hell anyway, I have grace. Hebrews 10, 26-31 says that that makes God angry, and even though he can't send you to hell, he will judge you harshly for it. So if God cannot send you to hell, how will he judge you? The Bible shows that we could be condemned to miss the rapture, suffer through the great tribulation, lose our position as the bride of Christ, lose our position to reign with Christ, may lose our ability to even enter the New Jerusalem, lose our mansion, lose our white robe, and all other rewards, and even be whipped at judgment. 1 Corinthians 3, 10-17 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are, 1 Corinthians 3, 10-17. The Bible also says that we are not to commit fornication because our bodies are God's temple, 1 Corinthians 6, 15-20. Therefore, even though a Christian is incapable of committing the worst sexual sins like sodomy, prostitution, adultery, etc., 
If a Christian commits basic fornication and defiles their body, which is God's temple, then they have defiled God's temple, and the passage above shows that they will receive harsh judgment. To learn more about sins that a Christian is incapable of doing because the Holy Spirit will not allow them to, please watch our video, Sins a Saved Person Cannot Fall Into. The Bible shows in Revelation that a saved person can miss the rapture and go through the Great Tribulation. Revelation 2, 20-23 Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Revelation 2 20 through 23. The eating of things sacrificed unto idols mentioned here is specifically speaking of the Catholic Mass, which mixes Christianity with ancient pagan rituals. You can learn more about this in our video, The Lord's Supper. Only true Christians are capable of committing adultery against Christ. Therefore, these people who commit adultery with Jezebel are truly saved people and God's judgment falls on them for their spiritual adultery. And they miss the rapture and go through the great tribulation with Jezebel, the Roman Catholic Church. They also lose their position as the bride of Christ. Jesus Christ is not going to be married to a whore. Those who commit adultery against Christ will not be part of his bride. They will also not be allowed to rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Salvation only guarantees that we will not go to hell and that we will go to heaven. We must work for everything else. It is true that the Bible says that God chastens us so we are not condemned with the world. 1 Corinthians 11.32 but if we do not respond to his chastening and repent, we are judged with the world. We do not go to hell, but we are still judged with the world in this life, possibly by even going through the Great Tribulation. That is what Revelation 2, 20-25 teaches, and to teach anything else is to add to or take away from the Word of God. We cannot be condemned to hell, but we can be condemned to judgment. The Bible also says in James 3 1, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. James 5 9, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Many Christians also misinterpret Romans 8 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. They say that if you are saved, you are never under any kind of condemnation, no matter what you do. That is not what this verse says. It says that we are not under condemnation if we are saved and we walk after the Spirit. No, we are not going to be condemned to hell, but we could be condemned to miss the rapture, suffer through the great tribulation, lose our position as the bride of Christ, lose our position to reign with Christ, may lose our ability to even enter the new Jerusalem, lose our mansion, lose our white robe, and all other rewards. Salvation only gets us out of hell and into heaven. We must work for everything else. Christians will not get away with their sins. However, we do not have to live our lives in fear of judgment. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11.31, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. 
The Bible says in 1 John 4, 17 that we can have boldness in the day of judgment. Therefore, if we are seeking God's will and diligently trying to obey him and repenting every time we sin, then God is going to be faithful and show us his will and we will obey his will and our judgment is not going to be harsh. The Bible also promises in Luke eleven nine through 13 And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish... Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke eleven nine through 13 God loves us and he is not unjust to trap us or to hide his complete will from us. If we seek God's will and ask him for it, he will cause the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us and empower us to fulfill it. The Holy Spirit will help us to not sin if we allow him to control us. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit means to be controlled by Him. No one should ever allow any kind of substance, alcohol, drugs, etc. to control them. A true Christian cannot fall into the sins of drunkenness or drug addiction because the Holy Spirit will not allow them to fall that bad. He puts God's love into our hearts and makes it impossible for us to commit the worst sins. Someone who falls into those kinds of sins has never been saved. To learn more about this and other really bad sins that the Holy Spirit keeps Christians from falling into, please watch our video, Sins a Saved Person Cannot Fall Into. Christians should always be fully controlled by the Holy Spirit, so we are producing the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22-23 but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. God has given us everything we need in order for us to be successful for Him. We do not have to be afraid of judgment, but we had better be afraid of it if we are rebellious or lukewarm. Again, a saved person cannot lose their salvation, but they will not get away with their sin either. God is holy and just, and he will judge us for our sins if we do not repent of them. To repent does not mean to just ask forgiveness, but also to sincerely pray and work hard to stop doing our sins. We must also go make things right with other people we have wronged as much as possible. We can never be sinless. We will always accidentally sin until we go to heaven. But our hearts can be pure to where we do not want to sin. And it is possible for us to never willfully sin. And that is what God wants. We can also pray and study the Bible enough to make sure we never commit any ignorant sins that could cause us to lose our rewards. A person can receive all of the rewards at judgment, but they must be very diligent to pray, study the Bible, and obey God in all things. You need to pray specifically daily that God helps you to receive all of your rewards at judgment because you cannot achieve this without his power, and to think that you can would be the sin of pride. Job never willfully sinned, Job 1.1, 1, 1, and he did not even have the whole Bible, the blood of Jesus, or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to help keep him from willfully sinning. God had not offered those helps to people yet. We have all of these extra things. 
Therefore, we must use them and we have no excuse for committing willful sin or even ignorant sins that would be bad enough to get us whipped at judgment. Luke 12, 47-48 And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more. Luke twelve forty seven through 48 And as I said before, salvation only keeps us out of hell and gets us into heaven. We must work for everything else. No one gets away with sin.